Good day grade 10s, welcome to your second lesson in measurement. In this lesson we're going to be looking at TSA which stands for total surface area and we're going to be looking at the total surface area of right prisms and cylinders. So a right prism is a solid that has a polygon as its base. In other words it could have three sides, it could have many sides as its base and its vertical sides perpendicular to the base. The reason it's called a right prism is because the angles between the base and the sides are are right angles. So for example a triangular prism is going to have a triangular base and a rectangular prism will have a rectangular base. Now surface area is the total area of the exposed outer surfaces of the prism. Okay, And it's easier if we can unfold the prism. So let's look at a couple of examples. So if we look at a rectangular prism, we can see that the rectangular prism is made up of how many sides? It is made up of one, two, three, four, five, and six sides. Okay, but trying to work out the total surface area of a rectangular prism can be kind of tricky if we're trying to see it through three dimensionally like this. So it is easier if we break it up, if we unfold it. And this unfolding of it is called the net. So if they say we've got the net of a rectangular prism, they're talking about the fact that we, if we folded this back up, we'd get back to the rectangular prism. So this bit here is the top, which is that bit over there. This is the front, so therefore this is going to fold over and this is going to be the front. This is the equivalent of the top, but it's now the bottom. So it's that side there. And again, they said that this is the front, but in fact, it's the same as the front and that side, so that's the back. And the reason they've called this top and top and front and front is obviously because we could turn it over. And then obviously this bit here is that side over there, and that is that side over there. And then you can see it's actually really easy to work out the total surface area because all we've got is a whole bunch of rectangles. So let's do this one just to get practice, okay? We are told that the length of this is 10. We are told, so this would be the length, okay? This would be the breadth and this would be the height. And we are told that the length is 10, which means all these dark green sides are 10. We are told that the breadth is 5 meters, which means that all the light blue bits are 5 meters. And we are told that the height is 6, which means that our perpendicular height is 6 as well. Okay, so let's have a look at it. Okay, so if we look at this, we can see that the front of this is going to be 10 by 6. So this would be 10 times 6. So 10 times 6 is 60, right? This here is also 10. So 10 times 5 is 50. This bit here is 10 times 6. The purple is 6. So that's 10 times 6 again. So that is 60. And then this is 10 times the blue, which is 5. So that is going to be 10 times 5, which is 50. Then we've got these bits here. Now this is just the side, and the side is 6 times 5. So 6 times 5 is 30, and 6 times 5 is 30. And all we have to do to get the total surface area now is to add up the area of all our bits. So we've got 60 plus 50 plus 60 plus 50. So it is going to be 60 plus 50, plus 60, plus 50, plus our two sides, which is going to be plus 30, plus 30, which is therefore equal to 50 and 50 is 100, that's 60 and 60 is, so that's going to be, let me try that again, that's going to be 100 plus 120 plus 60, or you can just pop in your calculator, but that becomes 220 plus 60 is 280, and remember, Remember that this is area, so therefore it's meters squared. So that's pretty easy. So if you lay it out down, pretend you're going to cut it out, and then you use your net. Okay, so that is the total surface area of a rectangular prism. Let's look at a different shape. The cube. The cube is so much easier than the rectangular prism because what do we know? We know that all the sides are equal in length. This means that this is S, that is S, that is S, that is S, that is S, 
that is S. Do you get what I'm saying? This is S. Everything is S. Okay. So therefore, do you agree that we could get Oh, okay, enough S's. We could get a formula for the area of a cube because what have we got? We've got the area of this is side squared, 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 and again the area of this last block is side squared because a cube has got all four sides equal. So now what do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six sides. So we've got six sides that each have an area of side squared. So therefore the total surface area is going to be six times your side squared which is six s squared which is nice and easy. So therefore if we had to do an example and we said okay fine this is for example 4 then we'd have that the total surface area would be 6 times by 4 squared which would be 6 times 16. 6 6 is 36 carry 3 so it's 96 and then whatever the units are units are squared. Okay, so the cube is what you really want to hope for when they ask you these questions. Let's look for another example. Ah, the triangular prism. Now again, it is much easier to work out a triangular prism, first of all, if you color in the different sides like they have, and also if you lay it out in its net. You lay it out in its net. So we can see that, yeah, this rectangle here, which is the yellow and the blue is this rectangle 2 over there. Okay, the yellow and the blue is rectangle 2. Then we've got a second rectangle which is behind this triangular prism which is going to have the width of the 5. It's going to be 5 over here but it's going to be 9 over there. So this is going to be where it is over there so it's going to be the 5 centimeters over here and the 9 there. And then the final rectangle is the one that's actually at the bottom. So if I had to try and draw this in nicely like this, you can see that this here, the purple and the green is rectangle 1, the purple and the light blue should I say. Rectangle 2 is the yellow, so it's this is rectangle 2, is rectangle 2. And then rectangle 3 is this back side here that's rectangle 3. And then we've got our two sides, they're flipped open, which have got a height of 9 centimeters and a base of 8, or you could say a base of 9 centimeters and a height of 8, because it really doesn't matter because they're perpendicular to each other. Right, so let's work out the area of this. So first of all, would you realize that we've got three rectangles, but they are different um, areas. So the area of rectangle 1, the area of rectangle 1 is just going to be length times breadth which is going to be, it doesn't really matter, 5 times 8 which is 40 centimeters squared. Now we've got the area of rect rectangle 2 which is going to be 10 times 5, so it's 10 times 5 which is 50 centimeters squared. And then you've got the area of rectangle 3, which is going to be, this is 5 and that's 9, so it's going to be 9 times 5, which is 45 centimeters squared. And now we've got the two triangles, and luckily for us, both the triangles are equal in size. So we've got an area of the triangle, the triangle, now the area of a triangle, remember, is a half times base times height. So in this case it's going to be a half times our 8 times our 9, which is just 4 times 9, which is 36 centimeters squared, which then obviously is double because we've got two triangles, which is going to be 72 centimeters squared. Oopsie, squared. So the total surface area is now the sum of all of this. So it is going to be 40 plus 50 plus 45 plus 72 and then what we do is that we whip out our calculator and we go okay fine that's 40 plus 50 plus 45 plus 72 and works out to be 207 
207 centimeters squared and that's how you work out the total surface area of the triangular prism so please guys realize that it is much easier to do this if you break this up into its net whoopsie let's go to the cylinder now the cylinder we're looking at the total surface area and what you need to realize is that if I cut along this length here this thing here would actually end up being a rectangle so the height of the cylinder, the size of the cylinder, are just a basic rectangle. This top here is a circle, and the bottom is a circle. Okay, but what you also need to realize is that this length here, actually let me get another color so you can see what I'm talking about. This length here, from here, where I cut it all the way along here, is actually equal to the circumference of the circle. That makes sense because if I'm cutting along here and I unwind it, then that there is the length of the perimeter of the circle, which is the circumference. So therefore, this length here is the circumference of that circle, which is 2 pi r. Okay, so now let's work it out. In order to work out our total surface area, what do we have? We've got for our total surface area, we've got two circles plus a rectangle. Two circles plus a rectangle. Now the area of a circle is what? Pi r squared, but I've got two of them. So it's two pi r squared plus the area of the rectangle. Well, the area of a rectangle is normally length some breadth, it always is that actually. But what is the length now? The length is the circumference of the circle, which is then 2 pi r times by h. 2 pi r times by h. And that is the total surface area of a cylinder. Now grade tens, it is actually easier for you guys to be able to work it out every time than to try and just learn this off by heart. So because they could give you some really weird shapes, you need to be able to work out what the total surface area is. And then you need to be able to solve for them. In other words, they might say calculate the total surface area, or they might say the total surface area is this, how much is the height? Okay. So please make sure you know how to do this practice and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day, great tense.